uh, wrote an agenda of what we could go through today and uh, I set things up so I can show some show some things and um, basically you don't have to understand all the different applications uh, that come with LibreOffice because a good bug report uh, that you will be testing so user reports it should have uh, very simple steps on how to reproduce a bug so basically for learning how to use LibreOffice while you are testing bugs this is how I for example learned a lot when I started as a volunteer in 2014 I didn't know anything about testing and I had used uh, some of the LibreOffice applications but I, I didn't have experience in, in some of them like the database application base uh, so just following the steps it's, it's a nice way to learn more and broaden your knowledge but obviously we have these resources like help uh, which contains like brief descriptions of functionality so maybe we could uh, just pick something from here we have menu item descriptions so this is very brief like kind of technical documentation and then there are these guidebooks and uh, for this purpose I guess getting started guide would be a nice thing to try if you're interested in contribute. It also has some uh, help content that doesn't necessarily fit so well into uh, the guidebooks or the <coughs> help pages themselves and anyone can create content there so it's kind of a free for all uh, uh, knowledge base and the search is not very good but fortunately we have this index pages so for example here in the QA quality assurance index page you can find the most important topics uh, you can find the mailing list uh, the chat and all kinds of articles about testing bugs and um, this get involved page has like a uh, distilled summary of how a new contributor might start this quick start guide is quite straightforward uh, it does link to some sub pages like searching for duplicates stuff like that uh, maybe we could take a look at installing LibreOffice versions so uh, this is the page for conveniently getting the very latest unstable builds which is probably included in the um, prerequisite stuff so <coughs> this particular Windows version is the one that you should get uh, there is this other one which is a debug build um, which is good for getting crash backtraces but it also affects the performance so it's not um, good like a general build test so this this doesn't have any debug stuff this uh, TB77 you can see if I zoom in and I have downloaded the version and it is not signed digitally so Windows will open this uh, protecting dialog and you have to click more information my Windows is in Finnish and 
you have to say execute anyway. Then this installs uh, separately from your stable build. So it has a completely different user profile. And here I'm unchecking these uh, Microsoft uh, file associations as I would like them to open with the stable build. And yeah, so this is quite straightforward. And you can always just install the new version on top of the old, you don't have to uninstall it. Yeah, and then for Linux, we had this um, quite convenient way uh, to kind of get the latest on any different uh, Linux distributions. Let me zoom in a bit. So it's using this app image technology, which creates a single file, which has everything inside it, and you can execute the file. So the prerequisite is that you have this D package uh, tool installed. <coughs> it be available in any Linux distribution. And then we could use this uh, script that has been done by a volunteer contributor. We'll go maybe create app image directory and then give this command. So I get this script and then I see how I should run it. Okay. I copy this command and it starts downloading this uh, very latest Linux build uh, ok, it's going to take a couple of minutes maybe I'll let it run there in the background while I talk about something else uh, so, if we look at the quick start steps here, it talks about grabbing both the stable, which on Linux is very easy, probably already installed as it comes uh, with the most distributions. And it tells to open this query for last month's unconfirmed and it doesn't have feature requests or enhancements and also some other stuff has been left out and this is just to make it easier for newcomers to focus on stuff that is uh, simple so obviously we, we get so many user reports that it can be overwhelming if you're a newcomer you don't know like uh, which area you should focus on and you really have to learn to also make decisions yourself you have to learn to skip things uh, if they go over your head so it's totally fine to not go into the most difficult areas which <coughs> I think might be something like database stuff and sometimes there might be reports where you have to set up like an external database and obviously that's something that uh, is quite a tough ask for a volunteer for, for example taking so much time to invest um, and the point of using both this stable build and the latest unstable is like a minimal or minimum way for a newcomer to get some interesting information on a certain bug. Uh, so you might find that the bug is in the stable version but is no longer in the unstable. So this will give you uh, quite a good indication that somebody fixed the bug recently and uh, you, you might 
mention this uh, while giving the version information. I'll also show this uh, later. Um, but then there is the possibility when you get more experience to investigate even deeper. Um, and searching for duplicates is something that you can do as a, a best effort attempt, but uh, it can be quite challenging, especially for a newcomer, because you have to uh, almost use your intuition to think of different ways that people might describe some issue. And when you get more experience, uh, you remember some old reports that you ran into and it will be easier for you to find duplicates. But obviously there are many duplicate reports in, in the bug tracker and it's fine, it's no problem as long as bugs get fixed. Uh, the obsolete reports can be closed later. So uh, that's why uh, we have, for example, this bug status called works for me, uh, which also indicates that uh, the bug was fixed, but we don't really know who fixed it. And it's fine to close it in that way. And uh, yeah, Plamari, I have a question here. Okay. And for the searching, the duplicate one, we will be searching on the last uh, month uh, unconfirmed uh, status itself or, uh, or the previous one? Uh, for searching duplicates, I can show you maybe some example, but you would be searching through all the bugs. All the bugs? Yeah. Oh. And now I see that uh, this. Uh -huh. Linux uh, unstable version was downloaded. I can see in my file navigator. Let me show here from the help menu this about LibreOffice or LibreOffice dev as it's called here. Uh, this is quite important as you can get the version information by clicking this button. You copy it to your clipboard and then you can paste it. Actually, <coughs> at least on Linux, I think I need to keep this open, <laughs> otherwise it will clear the clipboard. So if I just go to some report, I can say paste and here I see the text pasted. I can zoom in a bit and here there are various things which I might uh, get into just as we are here. So here there is this VCL uh, which is saying KF5 and some other stuff. So KF5 in this case means KDE frameworks uh, and LibreOffice has uh, this way of adjusting to the operating system. So it has this different user interface plugins for Windows, for Mac OS, and for a couple of different Linux UIs. And these are actually uh, mentioned in this VCL README that is also available online in this docs address, maybe I will paste it in the chat. Uh, so this is <laughs> kind of like a complicated system, uh, which is also a bit of a burden for maintenance, but uh, it gives the, the ability to really blend into the operating system. And obviously this is something that uh, kind of divides people. Some people might uh, even prefer like this electron style uh, system that looks the same on every operating system. But this is just a, like a philosophical decision that was made a long time ago and we're sticking with it. So 
on Linux we have this GTK3 as well so I, I have these shortcuts for myself I can launch this GTK3 interface and here we have this GTK3 style um, widgets and uh, dialogues it looks different uh, from the KDE style so this is something that uh, you do have to watch out for when you're testing bugs so especially if the bug is related to the user interface directly somehow then this does have an effect so Windows, Mac OS, the different Linux UIs uh, they can behave differently and it also means that if you are a Windows user then you might not be able to uh, test some bugs or have anything meaningful to say about a bug because it's exclusive to some specific UI so some complexity there okay what next let me see what I have on the agenda um, well maybe just briefly about the mailing list uh, here you can join the list it's possible to subscribe here and you can read the archives you can see that uh, I have this live streaming well not really streaming but uh, having Marie, uh, sorry for interruption okay you install the latest table build am I right uh, yeah latest table and also latest unstable that's a good minimum uh, way to start with the basic triaging yes by installing this automation in automated installation both get installed or only one is installed uh, with this Linux app image thing it's installing only the unstable okay actually not really installing but just um, creating this file that you can you can run and uh, for Linux the stable one it's coming from your uh, package manager for for example here I have Arch Linux and I can say this uh, information command okay well this is in Finnish maybe I will show it in English so LibreOffice uh, dash fresh um, is the very latest one so uh, like the more conservative version would be LibreOffice still and these are the code names that the Linux distributions use so you can check from your package manager okay yep so if we have the previous one we should install the latest from internet um, most of us well, are using Linux Mint here so I believe okay. we may have the previous versions of LibreOffice I don't think we may right. we have the latest one yeah yeah well maybe you shouldn't uh, spend so much time as, as this is like a um, hack fest anyway so I think it would be fine if you use uh, the unstable one and whatever you have as the stable one okay fine so obviously it's possible to get any version but that means a bit more work uh, <laughs> so you don't have to learn a hundred things in one day fine and uh, here okay are it of you yes Hello? i can Hello. hear you yes sir uh, i have a doubt as okay. per your video i just listen your comments i just downloaded liveroffice 7.3.3.2 
it is successfully downloaded to my linux system linux mm -hmm. mint my question is the earlier version 6.4.2.7 has been updated or still it should be there uh, okay so you're downloading like the the package that is in yes, sir. Yes, sir. the LibreOffice yeah, site. Yeah. So if I go here, it offers this. Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> well, I think that this installing in parallel page has this uh, manual installation. So it is possible to do this if you follow this. Uh, it's a bit complicated so this is why i uh, mentioned the app image because it's kind of straightforward so okay. if if wanting to get into this uh, it's possible to read this app image uh, read me so let me see it talks about this version okay so here we can see uh, values can be fresh still daily so i could even test this out like modify this command and uh, let's see what happens if i input fresh right so this is actually one way, even though I said uh, I wouldn't mention this. Uh, now I'm getting 7.3.3 .3 as an app image in the end. So it's producing the app image actually right now. So uh, to get the latest table one on Linux, simply type fresh in place of the daily. Um, maybe I will write it in the chat. I think I had it in, oops, no, I didn't. Just as a note there. Yeah, so anyway, back to the mailing list thing. Uh, in the archives, we can see that I have this live streaming stuff and if you want to get notified, just subscribe to the list and you will get this uh, where I very realistically show how <laughs> triaging can happen. And okay. Then what else? What else? Well, I guess we could still go back to the quick start guide. And maybe we could look at the duplicate search thing. There's just this brief explanation of searching for duplicates. And searching thing I could show a bit later maybe. But about the status, here it's saying if you have some confusing description or, or you don't understand how things should be done, you can change the status to need info. And this is something that kind of pauses the report. So usually these are ignored as long as no information is provided. And if seven months go by without any updates, uh, the reports will actually be automatically closed. So then if you are able to see the bug, you change the status from unconfirmed to new. So new means that it has been confirmed by someone else because we always require independent confirmation. But if you don't see the bug, then simply leave the status alone don't change it and simply say in a comment i was not able to reproduce and uh, uh, paste in the version information and about that 
about commenting we have these uh, tips for adding comments also add them to the chat so you can uh, mimic these or come up with your own uh, comments it also shows these convenient extensions for quickly pasting some uh, repeatable stuff so for example here i have uh, this clippings extension in firefox i can say i have this arch master which is my linux and then it's saying the distribution name and when i built it because i'm building it myself and i, I keep updating this when i do new ones or then i have this uh, please attach an example document set to need info so I don't have to always uh, keep writing this from memory so this is quite convenient and yeah so this has this page has many different examples of uh, different scenarios so then uh, we had this bug triage article so if you want to get into the details this has uh, much more fine-grained advice for triaging stuff uh, so you can take a look at this on your own time if you want to but it's not strictly necessary and then we had this how to report bugs so this is kind of showing you what a good bug report looks like it even has this good reports section like minimum requirements good examples examples of less good reports so you can recognize a report that is lacking stuff uh, <laughs> Let's see. And just to mention about this quick start step still. So the point of having this query for uh, only the last month's unconfirmed, the point is that if you go to the older unconfirmed, they are probably quite difficult to reproduce. They might have some uh, rare stuff that uh, is harder to set up or harder to understand so it's better for a newcomer to stick with the latest unconfirmed reports then you will have a better time anyway and yeah do you have a question yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt on this I just I just took one ticket ID ID number 148984. Uh -huh. And I tried to fix this issue after downloading the 7.3.3. Okay. I, I could able to fix this because as per the unconfirmed query, they say they try to do it 7.3.2 later. Nothing happens. Uh -huh. Next to version 7.3.3, we could able to fix this. So can I fix, can I move this query to the confirm query? Is it is it right way? What I'm talking? Uh, can you give the link to the report in the chat? Okay, sure, I will do that. So we could even look at it right now. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I can find it here. Uh, okay, so it's 
some pasting issue image not pasting into text document when copying from desktop so um, okay on the desktop we have several pictures files right click on the picture file and select copy uh -huh. nothing happens wow well this is um, we can see that this is lacking the version information so uh, just in theory this might be relevant so asking the reporter for the version information is fine in this case and um, let me try just in in this file manager what happens if i copy this and paste it here okay i get the image so i get a completely different result <laughs> And, uh, and one more thing, Elamari, uh, they have said they have opened in uh, Ubuntu uh, 22.04 and we have Linux Mint in our system. Is that okay to test on uh, Linux Mint uh, after installing this uh, liberal offers legislation? Uh, so you can use any version you want on Mint as long as you also use the unstable one or maybe i didn't get the question no they they said that uh, they are using ubuntu oh, all right system. right yeah 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 but we are having a uh, linux mint is that okay to test in linux mint that's the question well i think it's it's fine to test with um any linux distribution in this case uh it might be like irrelevant for windows or mac os in this case as it's talking about the file manager oh. but but it might be that this is something specific to ubuntu we don't know that uh, until maybe someone with this ubuntu version tests it and we are just assuming things here but we assume that this person is using the nautilus file manager and I'm not using Nautilus, I'm using this uh, Dolphin from KDE. So maybe this is affecting the result, even though uh, here I was using the GTK3 and I assume that this reporter is also using GTK3. So um, I could just set this to need info and say that i will pick from my clippings i have here the help about clipping please copy and paste here the contents of your help about uh, this and above it i could say i tested using uh, kde's dolphin file manager uh all right but actually this was uh, fr from the desktop but <laughs> anyway it's uh let me see if i can uh, put some stuff on the desktop even can i paste this paste the file on the desktop okay and then i will remove this try to copy this and it's still working okay okay so i will correct myself i tested using kde or kde and copying a, an image from the desktop and it worked fine yeah I think it's any folder is working, sir. Any folder, uh, so, it will work. Yeah, it seems to be working from any any uh, uh, source. I could even uh, launch my uh, stable build and try it. Wait a second. 
just copying from here and it's still working yeah and this means that I could uh, paste here the stable version information and might as well use the unstable one so both of the ones that I tested with and yeah so now the ball is in the reporter's court and they will give some more information we will know uh, which UI they are using probably it's GTK3 and you can keep testing this if you want to you can uh, add your comments on this well maybe not 10 <laughs> 10 comments but a couple of comments is fine so uh, even if someone has tested a report uh, you can add your own comments but you can just use your common sense if a report has already been tested on the same Linux system and uh, different Windows users, then it's fine to just skip it and move on to some uh, different report. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thanks. And maybe about searching for duplicates, uh, we could just pick some interesting report doesn't really matter which one uh, so here we have redo doesn't restore the numbered list and even without reading this description I could just start to imagine the different ways that this could be uh, reported and here I could even uh, so I'm in the advanced search by the way so this is when you open the Baxilla search it's probably in this simple search but then I like to use the advanced search which is quite powerful and by default it has this uh, dash 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 resolution selected this means it will search through any open report but if we control click this we can remove the selection and now it's searching through even the closed ones so now i have some options i can go to this component list and see that the component here was writer so I could pick writer here and I can use this summary field which is usually the one um, to use in searching for duplicates obviously you can use comment as well but uh, they contain so much data that uh, it can be difficult to find stuff so here we could say redo and maybe numbered and see what results we get so we didn't get many results we obviously got this exact same uh, report and then we got this other one which is open it's in new redo of numbered bulleted list not working if numbered list being selected at undo yeah so <laughs> this is like a very brief example of uh, how you can search for duplicates um, it's really down to luck if you will find something and it can be challenging for a newcomer to uh, determine that something is a duplicate simply by reading the description but uh, it's possible if, if something is very straightforward then it's possible to find it and I don't know maybe I could talk a little bit about this 
advanced search now. So uh, it has many different options for the string search. You can even use regular expressions in uh, many of these and you probably well you can limit the product to LibreOffice because we have some other things here and um, sometimes when you're searching for duplicates uh, you could search through all the components so it, you don't need to select uh, any component but if you want to narrow things down you can pick a component so you could do multiple different searches so for example if i unselect fighter okay it's still giving me the same result but anyway uh, as we have like tens of thousands of reports uh, you always have to uh, do some refinement in the searches and comment also has the same options for different string matching types um, keywords then here we have uh, the feature request enhancement so we can limit to it if we want to and here is the operating system we could pick linux windows mac os and by the way about this operating system uh, we only have this all for stuff that is seen on uh, two or more operating systems so if something is reproducible on linux and windows you just use this all and for the version by the way it's always the earliest affected version that we are interested in so it's not not like uh, the very latest that someone tested in it's always the first one with the bug and you can even search by people uh, this auto completes to some email it's searching for the real name and the email and uh, even by change history bug creation might be a good one or when you don't pick any anything from here it will look at any fields that were changed so for example here i could pick a date as the minimum change date and when I hit enter, oops, I was still limiting actually this. So if I want to see like a bigger list of bugs from a certain uh, time, I can see this was limited. Then I see all the search results. And now it's thinking a bit. We get 3,600 bugs that were changed after 1st of April this year so <laughs> we have quite the volume of bugs and actually maybe about this uh, Bugzilla interface you have preferences and account information and here you can input something uh, it doesn't have to be your real name it can be a nickname so this might be a good idea to to do in the configuration and what about general preferences do we have anything interesting here well we have this um, automatically add me to the CC list of bugs I change and the default is never so if you want to keep uh, getting updates from the bugs that you commented in 
you could change it to only if I have no role on them. And otherwise you would have to you would have to manually click this checkbox in the CC list, add me to the CC list. It's also fine if you want to do it. Yeah. Hmm. Do we have anything else? I think we are kind of um, covered all the stuff that we had to cover. So do, do anyone have any further questions? I have a question for uh, the new person wants to contribute. So, is there a way to find a simple bug so that they can uh, they can have a hands on that so that they can start uh, contributing towards this? Is there a way to find a simple bug like, or you just mentioned some areas where they can find a simple bug to validate and they have a hands on to that? Yeah. So, uh, like I mentioned. This quick start guide has this um, query, which is pretty good for newcomers. And uh, then uh, I, I can't really provide like a list of simple bugs because it would take me hours to go through them and evaluate them. And uh, I think I could. <laughs> analyze the box themselves in the same uh, period of time but but this is like a good rough estimate of of uh, good box for newcomers because they are new they are fresh and uh, this means that they contain a lot of easier ones but then you just have to go through these and evaluate by yourself like no i'm not going to test this it's completely over my head skip it skip it skip it and go that way and uh, that's really uh, all that i can advise on that yeah yeah thanks for your answer and yeah is that any particular component which will be i mean quick and easy for the new guys to contribute because i see something which is related to framework another thing which couldn't be easy for the guys to understand so in general like if you say like ui related the area if you concentrate you'll be having a handsome or ham I mean, handful of bugs you can validate and you can do the good contribution towards that so is that any particular component like uh, you can uh, point out to the guys so that they can uh, uh, start looking into the particular uh, component wise so that they can do some good work and they can have some understanding towards the um LibreOffice as well. Yeah. So I think that, um, like I mentioned at some point, uh, a quite a difficult component or like an expert component is base. So it's dealing with this database stuff. I could even uh, show it. Maybe I have some example database actually. Oh. Does this have any content? Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, this is quite complicated as it usually requires you to open like this uh, sub interface, like a table or a query or form or maybe even a report. And, and the, this can kind of go over the head of newcomers. Like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to edit this thing, which is changing the structure? Here you can see this weird node interface, <laughs> all kinds of different fields. And, and then you have the like a user facing part. So it's it has like multiple layers of interface. So I think you could skip any base related reports but uh, the others might be 
kind of uh, understandable. We have the presentation, the drawing. I think these are still quite understandable. Uh, obviously, all of these have a kind of uh, esoteric features, especially Kalk might have like um, whatever validity thing or, or what we might have here, strange filter operations, pivot tables, uh, XML source, whatever. It might go over your head. Uh, so just skip anything that seems too difficult. That's the main advice. OK, thank you. And also, do we have any component-wise description which we can understand, like uh, by going through the components and say that, OK, this this couldn't be fit my uh, strength so that I can skip this component and I can filter out some component? Is there any details which about the components in the Bugzilla? Uh, Bugzilla, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if Bugzilla itself has the descriptions, but uh, at least the help can give you some uh, idea. So here we have text components, writer, welcome to LibreOffice Writer help. It has this working with writer and, and then spreadsheets. We can pick from this sidebar menu, we can get to the uh, main pages of these. So you could evaluate this if you want to. And uh, we also have, a, wait a second, if I open some dialogue, we have this help button. Oh, wait a second, it's actually uh, opening it in a different <laughs> Firefox instance. But anyway, this uh, gives you like the context of the user interface uh, area that you're in. So it can also be a convenient way. It will open it in the uh, help.libreoffice.org if you don't have the help package installed. If you have the help package, it will open locally but it's fine if internet works anyway. Okay, got you. Thank you. Thanks. So yeah, probably I have missed some stuff, but, <laughs> but I think we covered quite a lot of things here. And maybe just to say about uh, the possibilities of analyzing bugs, uh, we have like these advanced techniques. So it's possible for us to determine the exact code change that caused a bug. And this is a topic on its own. I won't get into this, obviously. But uh, yeah, we have quite powerful tools and we tried to make uh, the documentation regarding them as good as possible. And uh, I, I do also provide like a one-on-one -on -one mentoring uh, for newcomers. So if you want to stay uh, involved, then you could also uh, get in touch with me and we will start scheduling mentoring sessions. Yeah, that's a great news, actually. So is there any particular timing you're planning or like uh, what is the way like you we need to contact you in other details? Yeah, just contact me and then we'll figure out some uh, date and time that is suitable for both of us. And I'm doing this all the time. And usually I meet like every two weeks 
uh, with some newcomer and we meet until uh, the newcomer has learned the advanced techniques and then they might just keep doing the stuff on their own or maybe they get interested in uh, programming and then we start to look into the C++ stuff. This has happened as well. So it can be a good way to get close to the source code so you get uh, ready to, to jump into development. So you mean to say that so they don't have any background of coding also doesn't matter, right? So just they have the interest so that it'll be giving ideas based on their capability. They can uh, involve themselves in the activity, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, bug triaging doesn't require anything uh, regarding programming skills, but but then people might get interested and then they start learning C++. Uh, this has even happened. So you don't have to have any background. You can just start learning and work on your own pace and we will support you. But obviously <laughs> it requires uh, investment of time. Yeah, agree. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thanks. Thanks for your nice gesture. Okay, so Motu, do you have any any last words? Should we wrap this up? Yes, uh, it is very fantastic. You gave us your time, and I believe our guys enjoyed this session. And they may have questions, but at later time, I'm pasting the Jitsi link here so they can connect to that link. And if they have any doubt, let us uh, try to clarify those things. If anything is needed, uh, we will reach you at later time. Thanks for the time. Yes, you can reach me via email. Yeah. It's fine. Thank you. Uh, let me conclude something in Tamil, Ilmari. Sorry for that. In the session, attend in the Jitsi link in the chat. And the link in the session, you can answer your questions. Now, we will update the team. We will pair testing. We will meet the session. We will meet the Jitsi link. Sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I really proud that you gave me an opportunity to enter team, our team. Thanks a lot for that. Especially, I am a one IT guy. I am a pure finance guy. You want me to do all those things. I really feel good. Today, I just randomly picked up the bug ID from the bug list. I just tried. You only made me to do that, and I have done it. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you very much for giving me this task. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, Ilmari. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thanks.